Okay, here I am in Photo P, digitally inking with a pressure sensitive brush. I'm doing some pretty small things here. I, I always ink from the upper left hand corner down to the lower right, and that's just because I'm right handed. And traditional inking, that means I don't smudge the ink. But it's a good way for me to just get a feel for it. I usually say you don't want to start with the details, like the main focal points of what you're doing, until you've gotten used to the brush and a little of these skills. Now little things will happen, like this. And that can be tough. But that happens with traditional inking too. And if you want to be really perfectionist about it, you can just swap your foreground and background and paint with white on the other side of it to clean it up. Because we're just going for a clean black and white image here that we are going to change into vector line art in a few different ways. And this is where I continued the line and, you know, and it bled a little bit. If you always want perfectly even lines, just don't use the pressure sensitivity for your tablet. But I wanted this kind of thicker outline and then more delicate interior lines. And then I can always use my rotate tool. The shortcut is R. Just hold down R even if you're on the brush. My only problem with the shortcuts like that is that you use it and then you still have to click back on the brush tool to get to it. But it's helpful. I'm going to change back to black. To me it's pretty important to lock your other layers so you're not accidentally inking on a layer that already has stuff on it. And then you just breathe deep. Try to keep your hands steady. You make the best line art you can. And I'm going to model not being a perfectionist for you. Because we don't have the type of uh, timeline that allows for us to be perfectionist about every detail. Just getting used to it. Notice that I am extending the width of my lines quite a bit. I'm more than doubling my sketched line because that's going to make it stronger line art. I don't want you to be afraid of thicker lines because the challenge becomes how can I fit everything in. But I'll be able to. And to be honest, I actually like the smoothing in Photo P on this brush better than I like the smoothing in Photoshop. Photo P actually added it first and then Photoshop copied it from some other programs like Procreate too. But it's a nice feature to have. Because I tend to have a very sketchy line when I'm just drawing. So I have to remind myself for inking that I got to just commit and live with the line. And I might make decisions in the line art that aren't in the sketch. Like I might decide to close that shape up. 
one advantage of digital inking is that you're very aware of closing your shapes, which will help with coloring later instead of having a lot of open shapes. And then remember, I can always fix mistakes by flipping the foreground and background using those same brush settings to paint on the other side of the line. with white pixels. Then flip it back or go back to defaults and continue with your inking. Now, if you remember the three types of logo design we thumbnailed for our proving ground, proving ground number two, one of them was central symmetrical. And one of them was dynamic, and one of them was a play of positive and negative space. You could use all of those for spot illustration as well. The thing you can add in Spot Illustration to those strategies is you can add multiple elements and even create kind of complex narratives. You know, you can have more than one focal point. You can have people talking to each other. Because this is mostly a central symmetrical design, I'm only going to ink it really one half of it and then copy it and flip it and then make those little asymmetrical differences. So like this eye on this side doesn't look good, but it's fine as long as it looks good on this side. So I'm going to ink this half first. But that's just because mine's more central symmetrical. And the computer is definitely helpful in that kind of thing. Because it can make perfect copies. Anytime you're getting stuck, let me know. So that light bulb is going to get split in half. Everything's going to get split in half and then just repeat it. In one semester, we did uh, playing card illustrations. So that's, that's kind of mirrored symmetry design, like a queen top and bottom on a playing card. And it's a similar challenge. Now, if I go too fast with my tablet, there's a chance that my I'll leave my um, processor behind, and it will lag. So that's why I'm going really deliberately, pretty slow. And if you need to zoom in, you can do that. I might switch to a slightly smaller. But I think this is going to be my smallest brush. And to make coloring easier in the next step, 
even if something's open at the edge, I'm going to go ahead and close it up in my digital inking as much as I can. I don't love how I did that. So I'm going to hit R. I'm going to use a different rotated angle to do this. Go back to my brush. Find an angle that's more comfortable for my hand. Just like I would if I were inking it by hand. So if you zoom in enough, here I'm zoomed in at 300%, you can see the pixels pretty clearly. So that's 300%. So this is going to be pretty clean. And we're going to use this to create vectors anyway. And those vectors won't have any of that pixel stair-stepping to it. So we just need it at a high enough resolution so that the vector knows exactly what it's tracing a vector from. And that's called image tracing or vectorizing. When you take a raster image and turn it into a vector. Now 300%, I think I've said this before in compositing, that's beyond what your eye can see. So that's zooming in enough that I can actually see the pixels. I don't want to ever zoom in more than that. It's just a waste to get that detailed. So maybe 200% is a better a better zoom for some of these details. This 300 might just be a little too picky. It is important to use that smooth and to be aware of how you're using it. So I'm using it at 35 because I want to use that consistently throughout. I don't want to all of a sudden turn it off for another point or you're going to notice a very distinct difference in your line quality because all of our hands shake a little bit. But if you put it on 100% smooth, it's going to take forever for your brush to turn corners because it's always a trade-off between smooth and accuracy. You just have to experience it for yourself as you're digitally inking. One thing Photopea is not so great at as Photoshop is when it's doing really small marks with the pressure sensitive pen. And that has to do with the, the HTML5 browser, Chrome, interpreting the tablet. It's pressure sensitivity settings. Photoshop, you actually install the tablet right into the program. So it has an easier time interpreting these things. And for instance, if I wanted this to be more open, I can always just paint it with white, like so. Thin out those lines on the inside. And I use a white brush instead of the eraser so I can just keep the exact same brush settings that I've gotten used to, the same smoothing, everything. So you can taper lines from thick to thin pretty easily that way. Zoom out a little, see how much I can get done. Thicker lines, you push harder, 
thinner lines, you 